Hi, I'm Bubby. Recently, we put out a video, how to be the perfect guest. And a lot of people ask me how to be the perfect host. So this is that one. Being the perfect host. Well, first of all, we're going to take the word perfect and throw it in the trash can. There's no such thing as perfect. As a lot of the comments have shown me before, you're right. No such thing as perfect. It's just an expression. Um, so sorry that I stressed anybody out there. There's no such thing as perfect, but you want to try and get things as organized as possible. So if you are hosting, what you want to do is you want to find out what are the dietary restrictions of your guests? What are their comfort foods? Those are the two things you want to find out for them. So if they can't have this and they can't have that, and they write it down. And if they like this and they like that, write it down. And now arrange your meals. Let's say they're coming for seven days, a whole week, right? Write down the lists of meals that you're going to be giving them for those days because they're coming to you and you are now in charge of their eating. That's how it works when you're the host. So what I like to do is I like to say, okay, here's three choices of breakfast and breakfast is offered until this certain time. You can have yogurt and fruit. You can have fried matzo are coming up on that holiday, or you could have eggs with a salad, right? So those are those are the breakfast, but breakfast is done at 10. It's over at 10. Can't wake up at 11 and ask for breakfast. Now you're at the schedule for lunch. Lunch, and then I write down what the choices for lunch are. Perhaps it's tuna salad with a big salad. Perhaps they're going on an outing today. So then it's your job then if they want to pack them some picnic before they go, maybe some coup de tay, cut up vegetables and some fruit and some little tuna sandwiches that they can take with them, tuna on matzah if it's Passover, right? So here we go. And then what's the dinner? And write it out and plan it out according to what they can or what they can't eat or any of the diet restrictions in your household. Now that you have all the menus planned out for every day, keeping it very simple, it's the same, same breakfast every day, same time restraint, and boom, here we go. Then it's very easy to take from those menus and to make a food shopping list. Once you've transferred it to make a food shopping list, then go food shopping and arrange everything in your house. I like to take the menus and put it in my guests' bedroom so that they can have in their head what's offered to them what's going to be it's not it's never a good feeling if you're hungry and you don't know when the next meal is or you don't know what you're going to eat or if you don't know if you can it so comfortable to get so that I don't have to read somebody's mind they don't have to read mine if you're st if you're hosting and you are by the the mountains and it's a ski resort or the beach and it is a, a, a beach day and you want to write down perhaps I like to do this is I like to write down the conditions that are going to be in the weather whether it's snowy or whether it's going to be a day for the beach so I write down the temperatures and I put that in their room so now when they come into their room they have the temperatures for the week for the day and the night so they know which blankets they'll be using on their beds and uh, they know when the what the meals are and what the meals are and that's about as organized like i i can get but i can't get more organized than that if there's going to be one night that they're there that we're having a, a big family event or a big um event for all the guests then I like to let them know which night that's going to be at my house. It's a bonfire. So we like to have the marshmallows ready and the hot dogs ready and everybody gets ready for the, for the bonfire. And they'll know which night that is. That way there, there's no expectations on any other night. Everybody's free to do their own thing. You could sit and relax. You could read a book in your guest's room before they come, before they come, make sure that there are fresh linens and fresh sheets. And if there's a blanket on the bed, put it in a duvet so that the blanket is not a blanket that's been um, used by other guests. If it is a blanket that is used by other guests, hopefully it's washable. And when they leave, you wash the sheets and you wash the blanket. If the blanket's in a duvet and a blanket cover, all you have to do is 
wash the blanket cover, not the blanket. But it's very, it's very important that the cleanliness is is an aspect when they walk in. I like to have flowers in in the room. For me, I like to have fake flowers because I did find some of my guests are allergic to flowers. So that's not a that's not something that I would want to subject them to. I like to keep a little kettle that they can heat up some water and some tea and a cup and some books and a lamp so that when they they'll have a place to retreat to if they need some downtime or when they go in at night they can make themselves a cup of tea and it's it just says well i find that my guests are special when my guests arrive i want to greet them at the door I want to greet them. I, I'm going to be busy. I might have be behind schedule. I might have stop whatever you're doing because there's nothing more important at that moment than going outside and greeting your guests with a hug and letting them know how excited you are. They might be a little apprehensive. They might have had a really hard time with traffic. They're coming from um, a situation that you don't know exists, but you want to create the atmosphere when they come to your home, that they are loved. Or if they're not loved, you wouldn't have invited them, right? <laughs> so hopefully they're loved. I only personally only invite people that I love. Bring them in. Show them right away where they can place their things. If they're coming for a couple hours, let them know where they can place their pocketbook and their coats. If they're coming for a couple days, show them to their room and show them around their room and let them get settled. And when they're settled, come on out. Would you like a glass of water? Would you like a cup of tea? Because they've been traveling for a while. I like to have um, a, a coup de tay arranged, cut vegetables with hummus on the side. So when my guests come, if they were traveling a long time or a short time, they might be hungry. But eating is always a way to feel comfortable and it's set up and it doesn't disturb the flow of whatever I'm doing. And that way I know they're not going to be grabbing into the foods that I'm cooking for tonight that I've measured out exact portions, right? When you measure out your exact portions, you're going to be disturbed because people will put their hands in and take. So please, as, as, the, as the host, make more than enough rather than just the right amount. Somebody might want doubles. And that's a great thing. That's a compliment. So make more than enough and, and then... If it's extras, you can always figure out another meal that you can chop it up and make it into chicken salad or something. When you're at your meal, you want to set the tone that we're all sitting down together for lunch. We're all sitting down together for, for dinner. And as the host, sit with them. Get out of the kitchen. Hopefully, by the time you did this, by the time everybody's there, it's ready. Now, it might be impossible, but try to sit down with them. Say some prayers of thanks before the meal begins and say it together. Say some prayers of thanks after the meal and say it together. I know as people who have come out of COVID, the time period of isolation, we know how valuable it is to be with friends and family and family friends. This is very, very important. They isolated us from these from the ones who were the dearest to us. I, I remember spending Pesach Seder, you know, just like we're isolated. It was it was crazy. So now this is this is wonderful that we can open up and be together again, breathe without our masks. When we're so thankful that we're together, it's nice to remind ourselves and to say it. So we like to go around the table say what's our best part about today if it's like a week vacation what what's been the favorite part of this so far what's been your favorite meal what's been what's what do you what do you want to put into your memory banks and never forget right um what do you hope is going to happen tomorrow what what are your plans anybody anybody hoping for a beach day because that's where we're going something like that and then we like to bring in in my family we like to bring in words of torah because we sit down and if we're we're, if we're so blessed to have each other and to have all this food let's bring in some words from the torah to find out 
you know, what, what's God have to say about this? It's a living Torah. It, it, um, it's relevant. It's amazing how the Parsha each week is actually relevant to what we're going through. So, and then we have conversations about that. As you're going around the table, if somebody mentions something and it, and it explodes into like, well, me too, and blah, 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 and an organic conversation comes from it, go for it. And then when it starts to settle down, don't forget to move to the next person and find out what they were grateful for and what you're grateful for for each person at the at the table. Sort of like every day becomes Thanksgiving, right? A lot of people do it once a year on Thanksgiving. In my house, we like to do it every time we sit down as a family because if you're grateful every day, then you're rich. Then you're wealthy, right? Who's wealthy? The man who's, who's thankful for what he has. So you have to remember what you have to be thankful for. When it's time to say goodbye to your host, to say goodbye to your guests, sorry, um, you, want to, you want to walk them out of your house. Don't say goodbye at your door and then close the door. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good for either person. Because I know on, on my side of the door, when I'm closing the door, my heart hurts. I'm saying goodbye to people I love. On their side of the door, it's like, wow, this was like such a loving experience. And now the door just closed. Yeah, don't do that. Walk them out. Walk them at least 20 steps outside of the house so that you can maybe see where their car is. Maybe help them with their bags and and stay there and, and and wave to them as they as they leave with with the love, all the love that's in your heart and all the memories that you've created in the past hours or days that you guys have been together. And then you can follow up the next day with first of all, you want to say to them when you get home, let me know right? Call me or text me. The second you get home, I just want to know you're home safe. And then when, when you respond to that, either then or the next day, let them, let them know again of how special the time was that they came and how you appreciate their effort. Because yes, you did the effort of cooking and cleaning and hosting, but they did the effort of stopping their life and, and getting there, whether by bus or by train or by plane or by car, they did a lot of effort too, right? You want to, you want to value that effort. You want to value that person and you want to make sure that person knows that your heart, your arms and your home is always open to them. And that is your bubby pin for today. If you like this, if it's helpful, give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps. Thanks so much.